Good morning, my reader friends! My name is Erin Rogoff, and welcome back to my booktube channel, where today I would like to rank all the books I read in January 2021. I read seven books in January alone, and they are Quarantine by Lex Thomas, The Wildlands by Paul Greggy, Edgewater by Courtney Shine Mel, Okami by Renee Adaya, Fierce Street Party Games by R.L. Stein, Sun and Moon, Ice and Snow by Jessica Day George, and The End, Genesis by Zion Cage. I would love to rank them for you. Favorite to least favorite with one book ending up in my DNF zone. For those of you who don't know, that's my did not finish pile. And other books were fantastic and conversation worthy, so I wanted to talk about them in today's video. Ranking them and turning into a full-blown chatty girl about books, we have Quarantine the Loners by Lex Thomas. This was my first read of 2021, and my mom got me all the books in the Quarantine series for Christmas, so I devoured them in the following days and into the new year. Thank you so much, Mom. This, this is a great Christmas present. I love it. I loved the heightened sci-fi teenage drama, even though imagining the violent bullying and Lucy's near attack were extremely dark. This series has me wondering what high school clique I would fit into right now, because in high school I was an outcast and a leader of my own clique of misfits, so I have been in the loner crowd before. Now that I have the clique that I know I was meant to have my entire life, I am no longer a loner, and I'm a bit of a jack of all trades if I really think about it, so I don't know what type of crowd I would fit into if I were in the quarantine books. I mean, I love parkour, so would I be a varsity? I love biking, so would I be a skater? And I love reading, so I could also be a nerd. There is just so much that I have in traits between the cliques that I honestly don't know where I would end up. The next book that I would like to rank for you is The Wildlands by Paul Grecki. This is another sort of EMP fiction that draws you in from the get-go and does not disappoint. That's just me, I know not everyone loves this book, but I do. I enjoyed the maturity of 16-year-old Travis for taking care of his 9-year-old sister Jess after their parents were killed. I loved the characters as the book developed, and if there is a sequel, I would absolutely love to know if Travis admits he's falling in love with Tam, because they so belong together. And there is another book by Paul Grecki, however it is not technically a sequel as far as I am aware. I could be wrong, I haven't read the book yet, so I don't actually know. The next book that I read in January 2021 is Fierce Street Party Games by R.L. Stunt. Anyone who knows me from childhood knows that I have always loved R.L. Stein's books. Rereading the Fierce Street series is making me all giddy for classic children's horror stories, and I would love to know if that makes sense to you as well, because I can't be the only one here who loves the Fierce Street series. Or the Fear Street relaunch series. Oh my gosh, that is just amazing. I also know that some people dislike this book because it's so similar to the 1980s horror movie April Fool's Day, but I still love the book. And this isn't about the book itself, but when I got this book, it was a two-in-one format. So I got Fear Street Party Games and Fear Street Don't Stay Up Late, and I love two-in-one books like that. Sun and Moon, Ice and Snow by Jessica Day George is another book that I read in January 2021. It is a fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast with a Nordic slash Viking twist, and I personally think it's so worth the read. The main character is a girl with no name, and she has the power to communicate with animals. She's given a name by the mythical white stag that she saves, and you need to read the whole book to find out her name, which is told at the end of the book. And it is such a beautiful name. It goes perfectly with her personality, her beauty, and everything like that. It's just a very fitting name all around. And I am not going to tell you her name because I would love for you to read the book as well. This book is quite beautiful and sweet in romance with a great buildup 
and I am telling you, it is awesome. I absolutely love it. Jessica Day George, as far as I know, isn't really a well-known author, but I wish we could all remedy that situation by reading so many of her books. They are worth it. Another book that I read was Kami by Renee Adaya. Renee Adaya's books are ones I wish I could get into, but they're not as captivating to me as I wish they would be. Okami is a novella between the books of the Flame in the Mist series, and I have not read any of those books yet, but I might give it a try eventually, but I'm not sure right now because I already have such a huge TBR as you can see. Okami wasn't my favorite book, but it wasn't my least favorite book either, so it was sort of a meh type of book, if that makes any sense at all. I would love to know because I don't know if that makes sense to me either. Another book that I have read is The End Genesis by Zion Cage. Again, this was a book that I didn't like, but I didn't hate. It's somewhere in between. And I love science fiction novels and EMP thrillers, and that's science fiction stories about electromagnetic pulses where all the power in the world goes out and chaos ensues. I love books like that. That is such a huge weakness for me. If I am in the science fiction section of the bookstore in my hometown, I will be looking for EMP fiction all the time. This novel also had me wondering how I would act and what I would do if I were in an EMP crisis. COVID is bad enough. I don't need an EMP reality, but it's pretty cool to read about. That's just me, though. And the final book that I read in January 2021 was Edgewater by Courtney Scheinmill. This is the first book in my DNF zone of 2021, and I don't plan on finishing this book anytime soon. I disliked the plot and absolutely hated the characters. Lori's sister hoarded dead animals. Lori's aunt was erratic and acted way more bipolar than me. Lori's mom up and left her and her sister. Lori's dad isn't even a part of her life. Where is the guy? Nobody seems to care about Lori and her sister, and CPS doesn't take them away from their aunt, who lives in filth. I'm getting a little upset because of the injustice. That's just me being me right now. Anyway, this is not a book that I would recommend to anyone, unless, of course, they enjoyed the slow plot building aspects of certain books. Ugh. That is one book that I really don't like, and I just... If there was one book that I could live without, it would definitely be Edgewater, just because I hated the writing style, I hated the slow building plot, I hated the fact that there was no sort of trust fund at all where we were wondering, is it in existence, does it not exist? There's just so much that I disliked about the book that I don't even know why I have it on my shelf still. Anyway, if you want to read the book, please let me know in the comments below what you think of it, because I would like to know if you hate it as much as I do. Anyway, that is all for today, so if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button to show some support, subscribe to my booktube channel to get more videos like this, turn those notifications on to be notified when I have a brand new video uploaded, keep on reading, and have a great day everyone!